welcome back everyone to this uh, new video about compilers and uh, this time i'm going to show you a little bit how men here works that is a parser for ocaml and if you haven't checked out my two previous videos one on lexer and one on ocaml jack please check it out first because i'm kind of building on that we're going to look at men here so what is men here so men here that's a parser generated tool that is now part of the ocaml main compiler it's uh, got a uh, lr1 grammar so it's a little bit more expressive than the, the ocaml jack and it's also got a lot of other uh, nice features uh, so this is actually what you should use if you're using ocaml and and the nice thing is also that it's basically almost compatible with ocaml jack so we'll see that our previous example works out of the box so we'll now continue with the example from the previous video the main difference here is that you have to provide a command line when you're compiling with with uh, men here so if you are using a camel build you can also use dune but it's a little bit more complicated so i'm using a camel build because it's really simple to invoke so o camel build and then we say just use men here and then the file and that was main dot and then we compile so as you can see we are compiling out of the box this example program that we did in the previous video and this is the uh, lecture from the previous uh, video we are going to extend this a little bit because now we are going to uh, support uh, multiplication division and and so forth we're going to have a parenthesis as before but we're also going to have some line comments let us first uh, try to make uh, give some better error messages so we if we do echo one plus two here and then we write uh, like this it works but what happens if we got some say lexing error say that we write like plus a and a is not a uh, lexem in in this uh, in our version we get an exception so we, we typically would like to catch that exception and give a better error message it would be nice also to be able to get the line number so if we are writing several lines that we get the right line number so we will just add that to our parser and lexer. Let's start with the lexer here. Let's go to the lexer file. And there we would like to have now an exception. So we can define our own exception. exception uh, and let's call it error of characters. That means that we will now have one character saying which is the character that we got as a problem when we were lexing. And that will make it possible for us to give some be better error messages. In the end here, so all these rules matched in order. So if nothing above here is matched, mm -hmm. then this last one will be uh, invoked. So we say that whatever character we get as C, so then we get the character. If that happens, we raise our exception. The exception is called error. We provide then the character C. So now we have a, an exception and we raise the error. Let's go to the main and print it out in, in a good way. And what we want to do then is to do a try so that we are actually catching the exception. Try. So we return the value if, if we don't get an error. And then with, if we get a lexer error, right? Lexer because the module called lexer and then we have the error. And this is the exception error here that we just defined and then we get the character if that happens we want to do something and uh, let's print it to the standard error and then there is this f print f function and then you just give the file handle it can be standard error so now we're sending it not to standard out but to standard error and let's try something like lexical error at line and then all right, and we say that the character is like print C, and then we give a new line. And then what should that be? How do we get the uh, the line number? That is actually a special lex buff. Lex buff is a record available here, and you see that there is a number of different fields here that we can use for getting information from. And this current position here is a position, and then in that there we get the l num which is the the line number so we have the lex buff lex current position pus l num so that's the current line number and then we have c here 
if that happens, exit with an arrow code one. We need to do another thing here as well. Space or tabs, we should just go on and eat up the white space. But if we have a new line, we actually need to tell the compiler that it, it's a new line. So we should move this out and then we create a new one here. New line like this. And we call lexing.newline lexbuff. So this is a function of course, new line that you're, is available directly in the, in the library. So it, it increments the line number and then we could do this, the same thing. That's it. Now let's try to compile this again. So we got an error and we need to open up like this. Let's try it again. And now it works. Okay, so let's say, say that we now try and get this error message that it was an error before. This time, instead, we get a nice error matrix saying the lexical error at line one, and also that it says that it's the it's A. So if we write bold here, it says that it's unknown character starting here, the B. So now we have improved the lexing part a little bit. Let's uh, also improve directly parsing part. So we get a better parse error. Say that we are writing like this, plus here then we would get a parse error. So we want to get a better parse error. And men here has got a really good parsing error handling. And I, I will just show here some very, very basic. So check out the, the manual there if you want to get generate really good error messages, right? You, you can just write parser.error. There is no other information attached here. And then we just write f print f, and then we write parse error at line. And then we again do percent D and we can do the same thing here as before. We just copy this line. Here we go. And we should also do an exit one. So we compile again and we just write this and we get a parse error instead. Let's say that we write a test file, test.txt and we write one plus four plus plus seven. We should get a decent arrow here, right? So we write cut, test, and then main. And we get an arrow on line five. Okay, so it's quite good. I mean, it's it's not showing the column, but that, that's fine. Now let's uh, extend the lecture a little bit more. Say that we, that we want now to have line comments. And you can actually create the regular expressions and give them names here. So now let's create create a new regular expression called line comment. And uh, we say that it should start with, with this, uh, with a, like a C line comment. And then we say that it should not be a new line. And any character that is not a new line, we can repeat zero more time. That's a line comment. And what we can do now is just to add that, saying that the white space is, we eating up white space or a line comment. So we just write line comment here and it should work. Let's uh, see, let's try it, uh, the test file again, like this. This is a comment and we try it again. Okay, uh, let's compile and then run it. And we get a parse error and the parse error is on line six. So it worked with the comment and it also co correctly computed the right number. Um, let's extend this also to support some more tokens. So we have plus and multiplication. Let's uh, support uh, subtraction. Well, that's sub, support division. If we run it now, we get some problems because we do not have sub. So we have to extend our parser as well. We open up parser. And here we're going to do quite a lot of changes now because we want to use Menhir support. So we would like to use things that Menhir, uh, some syntactic things that are very nice. So for example, add here. We don't have to use these names everywhere. We can instead give use symbols instead, like add, we can actually use plus. And here we can actually use mouth. And then we do sum and division. We can also do the same thing here for tokens. Left parenthesis, right. 
Previously, we wrote everything here using this dollar sign, but in men here, you can also give names. You don't have to use this dollar sign. You, you say that this is E, this expression is E, and then we can just write E instead, a little bit cleaner. And another thing is that we do not have to have everything in different terms here. We can write everything in one expression and then use special notation to be able to set the precedence. This is actually available in Camel Jack as well, but I'll just show it here in men here. So let's uh, start by having uh, getting rid of, uh, of the other ones here. Uh, we can just remove this and we say that int here, we can give it the name instead, so we can, don't have to use that. And then we just write i. Expression here, we can write e1, e2. You see later on that we, we can make it very much simpler. We don't have to write add. We can we can still write add, with, but we can switch it to plus. And here we write e1 and e2 instead. Right. Now we can just follow that pattern and do the same thing for subtraction, multiplication, division, and so forth. Parenthesis. Then we can just write like this. e equal to expression. And we have then e. That we return. Let's see if this works. Well, we got some warnings and shift reduce conflicts here. And these are problems. If, if you have this, get these kind of errors, you have problems in your grammar. So it's not unambiguous. Parses uh, up until today assumes that you have unambiguous grammars. But we actually have a recent paper in the Popple Conference uh, 2023 about ambiguous grammars and how to statically resolve this. And it's it's pretty interesting. I will send a, add a link to that in the comments. Anyway, let's uh, continue here. Now we should try to resolve this. And the problem is that we have now put everything in the same non-terminal, the same production here. And it doesn't really work because then we got an ambiguous grammar. But it's possible to resolve this uh, ambiguity by just stating the precedence rules here at the top. So we can say that we want to have the left associative for plus and minus. And they then have the same here or the same precedence, but they are both left associative. And then you just state one like left, and then we say multiplication and division. This means that multiplication and division has got higher precedence than plus and minus. So the order matters here. So if we do that now and compile, it compiles perfectly. And we can uh, try it out. Look at where we test program again here. Let's uh, make sure that it actually works here, like this. And then we run, run it. And we got 13 as expected. So it works. Uh, another interesting thing is that you often want to have a, you know negative numbers. And right now, if we look at the lexer, we only supported positive integers. Typically, in a programming language, you don't want to encode that in the lexer because you want to be able to write you know a negative number for a variable as well. Uh, so that's why you typically put this as a unary minus. And it's a little bit tricky to do that in the grammar. But there is a trick here that you can use unary minus directly by defining them here using what is called a non-associative precedence rule. So we say that this non-assos has the highest precedence, and we say that we have a now a new terminal called u minus. We don't define that one here, but we define it instead within the grammar itself. So we can define it here by saying that we have a minus and then an e, if we have an expression and then a negative number like this, and then we write this prec, which is a special thing when you write u minus, it means that this operator here is then the u minus that is used up here when we are talking about the associativity and the precedence. And then we just write minus e here. Let's try it out again. Okay, I got a S too much. Compile it again, and then we run it again. So let's see if we have a unary minus, if it works. Say that we have multiplication with minus three there, and we got minus 11. 
So it seems to work. Very good. So that's everything I wanted to show now in this man here tutorial. It was a very quick one. And in the next video, I'm going to show a little bit more how you extend this uh, to also generate abstract syntax tree and how to pretty print them. So this is really what you want to do when you're writing a compiler. Stay tuned. Take a look at the next video. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.